Actually, JP Morgan, when they held their annual, annual conference in January this year, they got up and said to their investors, make sure you invest this year in the Alzheimer's disease yeah, drug market. I saw that. So they are betting against us. They yeah. are ensuring that we get Alzheimer's disease. So going obviously I harp on about Alzheimer's disease because it is my air. I'm doing a body of work and a doctorate. And so it's on, constantly on my mind. We just had in the last three months a newer FDA approval of a drug, an Alzheimer's disease drug, lecanemab or lecambi. It's a monoclonal antibody. We don't have to go into that. But oh, it's really? a, so it is, <laughs> it is an IV drug yeah. that you get. And what it does is it breaks down, removes the amyloid that builds up yes. in the brain, the toxic protein. That I said that if you sleep and go it deep sleep, it, it washes it out. Yeah. But let's just say the Alzheimer's disease patient has around four grams of this amyloid built up and we can, we can clear it out with this new drug. First of all, the drug is around sixty to $70,000 a year. That's the first thing. The second thing is it is where it is eating away at your brain tissue and causing brain bleeds on most of the patients that have had it. Yes. The Are journal, they reporting this? Yes, and- that's what we have from the reports. But the FDA is still going to approve it because it gets rid of the plaque. But during the time that it, it gets rid of the plaque, not only are you increasing your risk of, a, of hemorrhage and actually eating away at the rest of your brain, you're building up more toxic protein because you don't have the money, the means, the resources to actually go out and exercise. and So you're building up more protein, more amyloid in the process of it. But this is an FDA-approved drug now. Why are they approving something that literally causes worse problems than what it pertains to what it proclaims to fix? That is the question that I ask myself every day. It's because we need we need something to give to these patients, right? And at the end stage, when you have there is no there is no reversal of it. There is no like. Once you've got Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's disease is an accumulation of 20 years in the making. Congratulations. You did, it was 20 years that you got yourself here. Took 20 years. Now you're here. Now what do we do? Unless you are extremely, like I, unfortunately, I hate to say this, you have to have money at that stage. Mm-hmm. You have to have the means. Yeah. You have to have the the people around you, the help and support around you yeah. to get rid of and to have a, a healthy performing brain at that age and at that stage of the disease. But most people don't. So then they'll go on to this drug, which is promised, we're going to remove the amyloid from your brain, but it's causing so much more damage. Not to mention the economic cost. Oh, the economic cost is insane. Yeah, to the healthcare system, to the people involved. With every person that has Alzheimer's disease, you've got another two people that are getting affected by it, by becoming carers. Which is so, which which is the huge tragedy of that disease. Mm. I mean, any debilitating, deadly disease that you know, someone has to have caretakers for it. It's, it's, it's so sad because people have to like stop their lives and, and help them out. This one in particularly, it's like, you know, you forget where you are, who you are, what you're around. You don't remember it's, how to eat. And the thing that upsets me is that you've got, your brain is everything about who you are. Like I mentioned earlier, Imagine going to sleep not knowing who you are at night. That's that's, that's the one thing that is nightmare. sacred to you. Even if you've got a, a, a husband or a wife of 30, 40, 50 years, it's, you, you still go to sleep by yourself. Not only do you not know your, your kids or your, your spouse, you don't know who you are. You look in the mirror, you're like, what's my name? Yeah, I can't. That's my nightmare. That's 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 the one... That is... I mean, there's, there's a lot of scary diseases out there. That's the one I... I really want to do everything I can to make sure I don't get. And here's the here's the kicker, right? You've got around, like I mentioned, 55 million people currently mm-hmm. worldwide that have this disease. That number is said to triple by the year 2050. 3%, and that's a generous amount that I'm giving them, 3% of this population possess the genes that are responsible for Alzheimer's disease. So the other ninety-five, the other ninety-seven percent of people getting it, why are they getting it? If they don't have the predispositions, what is it? It's lifestyle factors. Yes. And why are they not 
Why did they not learn how to exercise properly, how to eat properly, how to sleep well? Because the the guidelines from the government are all messed up. They're wrong, yeah. They're all messed up. Yeah. But why are they? Because the government is fed by those three, the five food conglomerates, industrial military complex and the pharmaceutical industry. So it's all just like we're all just, it, it's scary. I feel so bad for people who don't understand what I understand in terms of like, I see what's happening. You see what's happening. Of course. Uh, I understand medicine. I understand science. So I understand like what happens, you know, if I don't do something, if I do do something, I understand genes and blood work. But the, like my one of my best friends yesterday, I did her blood work. She has absolutely zero idea of anything. And she's a she's a smart woman. So she's she's a lawyer. And I'm like, she's got not doesn't understand anything about blood work. And I'm like, imagine the people who are just at the mercy at the mercy who they've got to look after kids. Maybe they don't have a high socioeconomic That's right. status. That's right. How would you fix it though? Because I mean, you, I, I completely agree with what you said about the three things that, you know, it's like the circle of life with, with the government and, and power structure, but how do you fix that? Can't we fix it through doing um, podcasting free education? That's what I do. I try my it's hardest. It's a piece of it. It's but, a piece of it. But I think, and, and I think that's great. I think what you do and what some other people in your field, your colleagues do is amazing. But the, it doesn't solve the economic incentivization because I always look at this and I've known a lot of people in my life who work in big pharma, right? Who are really high up in some cases. And they're great people. You know, they, they, have, a, they have a job to do. And unfortunately, and we see this in other industries as well. I've cited this example, for example, with like tech companies and stuff. They're public companies in most cases, mm -hmm. at least the ones that matter. And every three months, they have to fill out a quarterly report. And every three months, they have to report to the market that this is what we did and you therefore need to keep buying our stock or hold our stock. Mm. And so the people who have to report this who are on the highest rungs, they are economically incentivized to make sure that at this quarterly report, they have the best results possible. Otherwise... Mm -hmm they're out of a job. And so it's less like, yeah, are, are there in anything, are there a handful of evil people? Sure. Like I know that exists, but it's a lot less of that. And it's much more the circle of life of economics that keeps saying like, oh yeah, all right, we got to come up with something that's going to make sure we hit this quarterly report. Oh, do we have a drug over there for that? All right, let's take care of that. And they're not thinking about that. Like, it's kicking the can down the road. Correct. Actually, JP Morgan, when they held their annual, annual conference in January this year, they got up and said to their investors, make sure you invest this year in the Alzheimer's disease yeah, drug market. I saw that. So they are betting against us. They yeah. are ensuring that we get Alzheimer's disease just so they can be running around in a in a Ferrari and so their kids can be going to these, you know, these high profile schools. But that's the thing. It's betting against their own kids too, because I'll bet their kids are doing a lot of the habits that cause that stuff. And they don't think of that. They're not consciously looking, going home, looking at their kid riding bikes around going, Haha, he's going to have Alzheimer's when he's 80. But when you look you at know? some of the risk factors for Alzheimer's disease, one of them is, you know, stress, chronic stress or chronic inflammation. I think We're about it. This, about that. Yeah. I think about this from a systemic standpoint, and think to myself, "Well, how? Do, what causes most stress in people's lives?" When you look at marriage breakdowns, I was actually reading about this. Um, I think look, the divorce rate now is around sixty percent. They said the 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 number one is coming from yeah, it's scary. Right? Good luck, Aless. <laughs> Good luck, Aless. Um, Three weeks into it, pal. Lifetime to go. <laughs> and you're just a baby. Um, the thing is, they say that it's um, that the first one is financial stress, mm. right? So then people have to keep up with so much stress in their lives, let alone think about exercising, eating well, maintaining good social circles. Like it's just, it, it's, there's so much to think about. What does cortisol do to your body? It inflames stress at all times. Like what are all the things it does? Cortisol isn't a, a, a bad it's not bad, right? It's like but that Goldilocks. It. It's like that Goldilocks hormone, right? It's we need it for certain yeah. certain reasons, right? We, we need cortisol. It's when it becomes chronically elevated. Correct. That's what I mean. Is That's what, we what need. I'm referring yeah. to. Yeah. And you can get this checked 
Again, you could get something called C-reactive protein or high sensitive C-reactive protein checked in your blood work and it'll come up with a, with a marker and it'll tell you. We go deeper than that and look at many different inflammatory biomarkers or I think we do around six. So it does many things. One thing is it can deteriorate the, the blood vessels in the brain. It can mm. deteriorate brain cells. Remember, if you're, if you're blood vessels, right, you've got arteries, you've got veins, and you've got capillaries. Now, stay with me on this. Capillaries are one cell thick. There's, they don't have walls. They don't have muscles on the walls of them. So in the, in the moment that you get hypertensive, high blood pressure, or even chronically inflamed, it eats away at the capillary. Mm. That capillary, one, is, is, one capillary is supplying blood to a certain area of the brain. The moment that that capillary dies, that area of the brain doesn't get any blood flow. What happens then? That neuron will die. Yeah. And you think, well, there's 87 billion neurons. Maybe a collection of them die. But that's the start. Yeah. It right? keeps it's it's habitual. Yeah, yes. Yeah. But then you've got you've got arteries as well. Now these arteries have walls around them, so it makes them strong, right? In order to pump blood and squeeze blood, making them effective. Inflammation over time ends up making the walls weaker. Mm. So it can deteriorate the walls of those arteries as well. Now it feels like everything around us is trying to make us inflamed. Like oh, it meaning is. Having, having inflammation in the body to say nothing of when I walk down the street, no one, the little bit I know, even as a novice, but like I look into this stuff at least, mm. I pass every restaurant and every food place and I know they're not trying, but I'm like inflammation inflammation mm. like it's all around it's us. a it's a cytokine storm so funny because when we were talking about sleep and you're talking about immunity as well there's really great studies now that have been shown that even having one week of sleep deprivation was which is considered six hours or less it was a it was a study that was published in pnas where they took a group of healthy men and they subjected them to six hours of sleep a night and they actually measured their their genotype. So they looked at their genes. So like I said to you, you've got around 20,000 genes in the human genome. They saw a change of one week of sleep deprivation in 711 genes. So they messed with 3% of the total human Whoa. genome. The genes, can, genes are like light switches. You can turn them on, you can turn them off. The ones responsible for immunity were turned off. The ones responsible for tumor growth were turned on, mm. right? So lack of sleep, right, can, you can cause yourself to be in, a, in an inflammatory state. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.